Pilots for Kids. Every Christmas season, our pilots visit with sick kids at the Phoenix Children's Hospital and give them stuffed animals and presents. Please co-mail donations to the address on screen. Hi, I'm Captain Eric in late November, ITT News had the opportunity to sit down with USAPA Phoenix Chairman, First Officer David Braid, and asked him a few questions. While you will no doubt find this interview informative, please keep in mind that we recorded it prior to President Cleary's feeble seniority mediation attempt, the company's declaratory judgment hearing on December 1st, and prior to American Airlines bankruptcy. Do you support the Nicolau Award? Personally, yeah, that's the way I vote, is that it's the Nicolau. That's how I vote. That's how I tell the BPR when I have conversations with, uh, with these pilots. It's the Nicolau. Are you contributing to Leonidas? Yes, absolutely am. I think everybody should. Are the West pilots supporting you? Absolutely. It's, it's unbelievable the support that we get uh, walking through the terminal, the crew room, uh, wherever. Um, guys always thank us. Um, they understand what a tough job it is. And, uh, you know, we're not able to accomplish everything we want, but uh, we're able to get some stuff done. But, uh, yeah, they're behind us 100 percent. It's it's really good to know. What is the financial situation of the union? Not good right now. Um, the dues are coming in, so the, the, the revenue is okay. But uh, there's a lot of expenses right now, mostly legal. Um, a lot of the – some of the – some of the committees are overspent, so we're, the BPR is working on trying to get those under control. Um, you know, so far we've, uh, we've voted for every provision or contract that's come along, so BPR is going to need to tighten up the belt and, uh, and get some of these expenses under control. Flight pay loss is going to have to get cut. There's just certain services that we just can't do um, continually. What is the present budget deficit? At this point, I don't know, but uh, the, the legal bills between the New York action, the declaratory judgment, and the injunction um, through the fiscal year runs through April, and uh, we're going to need to move some significant money around. So um, it's, it's big numbers. Can USAPA survive on its present course? Not good on the present course. We're going we're to have to change course here, and that's going to come through national elections, uh, changing the committees and, and things like that. Uh, it's going to take some cultural changes, but, uh, yeah, on its present course, it's we can't stay this course. We're not going to get to a contract on our present course, and, and that's the ultimate deal is to get to a contract and protect that contract. Can USAPA be reformed? I think it can. Um, it's going to take a change in, of the leadership, and that includes the committees, the leadership of the committees. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard the argument, yes, it can, no, it can't. Um, the only other choice is to change unions, and at this point, I don't think that's an option. So USAP is what we have, and uh, if we want it to work, we're going to have to change it. Steve Bradford, a USAPA founder, now supports a presentation by the Teamsters. Isn't that an admission that USAPA is a failure? I, I don't know. You, yeah, I guess you might describe it that way. Uh, I find it very ironic that Steve Bradford seconded the, admission, the uh, resolution to bring the IBT, or at least to talk to the IBT. Um, yeah, I would say that, that Steve is not happy with the direction of his union, since he was the first president and he kind of drove this idea. Uh, yeah, I would say he's not happy with the direction of this union. Um, bringing the IBT on, I don't know if that's going to fix any of our problems. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's odd that, you know, it seems that, that a lot of guys are searching around for something different because um, they keep getting answers they don't like. I seem to remember that not being part of a national union was a big selling point for USAPA. Yeah. Kind of an interesting switch, isn't it? Um, I thought about that myself. That uh, yeah, that that was how USAPA was sold. That we're going to be an independent union. We don't want uh, conflicts of interest. And to 
go back to an independent to a, uh, a national union with oversight and talk about a conflict of interest between pilots under the Railway Labor Act and cab drivers or truck drivers that don't work under the Railway Labor Act to fuelers or uh, ATC guys. Yeah, there, there's a huge conflict of interest there uh, in oversight and sending money to a national union. Yeah, it's, that's going to be a tough sell. The West is always asking, what do I get for my dues? That's a difficult question. I, I get that in the crew room a lot, and I have a hard time answering it. Um, uh, you know, unfortunately, not a lot, um, but this is, this is where we're at. This is the union we have. Section 29 requires us to pay the dues. Uh, if we want to vote or a voice in this union, we, we've got to have the members. We've got to have at least 1,000 members in Phoenix to have the three reps to have the three votes. So, um, you know. It's kind of the necessary evil. The West is about 40% of the entire pilot group. Does the BPR spend 40% of their time on West issues? No, no. Um, we bring our issues. We try and fix our issues here without having to take them to the BPR. Um, been pretty successful at that. So some of the big issues that we need the negotiating committee on or the grievance committee or something like that. Um, we have noticed that, that the other BPR members are uh, at least now willing to talk to us about these issues. Uh, we brought one about the, uh, the reinstatement rights to Vegas, and uh, it, at least they're talking about them now, where two years ago when, uh, when Brees was the chairman, it was hard to even get them to talk about it. So, But no, we're, we're not dealing with 40% of our issues. Then should the West Pilots be union members? Yes, sure. Need the votes. When it comes time to vote for a contract or vote for national elections or a change in the Constitution, we've got to have as many votes as we can. Uh, you know, I know I've heard the excuse, you know, oh, my vote doesn't count. Well, it does because we can vote as a block. And if we have 1,400 or 1,100 or 1,600 votes, um, it's a big influence because right now the East Pilots, there's a lot of factions over there. There are a lot of divisions, uh, all kinds of different political agendas. So if we can break those up and vote in a block the way we want, uh, we have a huge influence on, on a lot of things. Will the West Pilot be the swing vote in the upcoming presidential election? Absolutely, I believe that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, depending on how many people run uh, from the East, if it's one, not as much, but if it's two or three or four, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to decide who gets to be president. Even with the small number of West pilots participating in committees, we have seen a disproportionate number of them being removed by President Cleary. Was it political? Yes, I believe it is, or that it was. Um, we, we had a, a small number of committee members to start with, and a large number have been removed. Um, we're trying to get more West members on committees. It's it's hard. Uh, guys that do participate are, are removed. It's kind of frustrating. So we would like to see more West participation, more guys step up and, and get on committees. But, uh, yeah, to have them removed, we, we weren't happy about it all. How would you rate the Grievance Committee performance? Poor. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we haven't been happy with, with the Grievance Committee. Um, obviously, the, the big one that stands out is the distance learning grievance. Um, that we weren't informed of that, that it was, you know, we feel it was just, it was given away. So um, a lot of our grievances we don't hear about. That's, um, again, we're trying to get some guys on the grievance committee, but uh, it's, it's tough getting anybody to step up. So hopefully we're making a little progress on that. Um, we had an, a new guy go to a GRB, Grievance Review Board, and uh, I think he did a real good job. So, yeah, we'd like to see some changes on the, on the Grievance Committee and in a better job, frankly. What is your confidence in the current Negotiating Advisory Committee? Mm, not real well. Not real good. Um, having trouble just negotiating small things. Uh, we tried to get a, uh, a restoration in one of our contract provisions for uh, seat support. Just couldn't quite manage to get that done. So, um, yeah, I'd like to see a big change in the, in the uh, 
negotiating committee. Two guys they added. I don't know what they're adding in value to the, the committee. Um, we've got to add $250,000 to that committee alone for those two guys. And I asked the question, are we getting $250,000 worth of value? And didn't get a real good answer. In the past, we tried to push for more members on the negotiating advisory committee. We were always told that three members was enough. Uh, we've, we brought that up at the, at the BPR meeting, that we were told that that was enough, and then all of a sudden they added two. Uh, not a lot of discussion about that. Um, no discussion about how you pay for it. Um, we have brought to the BPR that uh, the transition agreement allows for three west and three east, and the company will pay for it. So we think that's a real good way for the company to pay for this and not come out of the, the dues. But uh, we've found resistance to that idea. Is the Kirby proposal enough? Absolutely not. No way, no how. Why? The, nickel, or the, the Kirby proposal was four years ago, for one thing. Our contract's been amendable since 06. Uh, it's, not it, it's entirely not enough money to start with. Uh, $122 million is, is, you know, that's going backwards for us. And of all the things that, that we've seen, um, th there's nothing in this contract for the West Pilots that we've seen. Just, it's, it's not enough. Um, you know, Nick or not, there's not enough money in this contract in the Kirby proposal. It's going to have to go up significantly. What is our prospect to get a contract? Yeah, well, I, personally, I think we're, we're several years from getting a contract uh, with the circumstances we have now. Uh, you know, if there's a merger later on or if there's, uh, you know, a couple things could happen. But at this point, uh, we're not going to get to a contract for a while. Anything you would like to add? Yeah, we've, we've got some elections coming up right now. Um, there's there's two there's national officers those are coming up but then the uh, the local domicile Phoenix elections are uh, before that so the uh, the nominations will open soon and uh, I hope some people will will step up and and do the job uh, personally I'm not going to run again that'll be three years for me and uh, that that's enough so uh, I hope somebody else steps up it's a very re rewarding job it takes a lot of time a lot of work a lot of dedication. Um, but it is very rewarding. You, you get to help guys. You meet guys that, that really need help, and uh, it, it's good to be able to do that. Uh, Got to go up there and do battle with, uh, with, with those guys in Charlotte, but that's part of the job, and uh, you, can, you can take the uh, West guys message forward and uh, represent them. On behalf of the West Pilots, we here at ITT News would like to thank David Braid for his sacrifice and dedication to a very difficult task. <laughs>